Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Let me tell y'all something. I personally think Terrence Crawford is going to confront the harsh reality that he lacks crossover appeal. Now, now I'm going to say this, right? You have some people when it comes to how they're received, right? No matter how much good they do, people can't get beyond that initial impression. And that is something that can hurt, can hurt uh, a potential, a, a person's potential well, you see there's a positive upswell in their profile. Now, when it comes to Terrence Crawford, and we saw, and I'm seeing him do more interviews now, and, and when I'm watching my sweats, I can watch myself. I'm telling y'all, man. Without getting into a whole bunch about me, I'm watching him, and I'm like, man, he needs somebody to, uh, he needs people with huge platforms who are going to interview him, who understand his demeanor, who understands his stoic present, uh, presentation. Because I'm telling you, man, that crossover appeal, he can do it, but he's got to go on the right platforms. Because this is what's going to be expected of him. To really have that crossover appeal. It, 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 there's, there's an array of things, but the number one thing, man, is people want to see teeth. They want you to come out there smiling, a the bubbly personality, vibrant. And that's not Terrence Crawford. And let me tell you something. That wasn't me. I'm telling y'all, man, I'm telling y'all, when I'm watching Terrence Crawford, man, ah, man, it, it, it just hits home. Um, I've had people, man, I, you know, let me tell you something. I've, I've been retired since two, December 2018, right? And let me tell you, my, I decided to stay home because my youngest was a baby at the time. Now he, he'll be six this year. So we go to the kindergarten. So it's like, all right, cool. You know, I'll go find something to do in addition to this little fun thing I got going on with this YouTube channel. But let me tell you something. One of the main things that I don't want to deal with is going out here and taking a job, right? It's dealing with people. And dealing with these personalities and going back into the, the BS where people are, are like, hey, smile. Hey, how, oh, what's wrong? Are you all right? So now everything's cool. Oh, you just look angry. Well, I mean, say something funny and I'll smile. Um, and let me tell you, that's something I heard all the way up until I retired, man. And I went as far as you could go. Remember, I was on the enlisted side. I went all. Of, I went as far as you can go, as far as promotions. Couldn't go any further. Just like Terrence Crawford went all the way you can go and at 140 and 147. Man became undisputed. They can't go any further, right? For me, I'm the top 1%, Right? Top 1%, only 1% get to where I got. For Terrence Crawford, only 1% gets to where he got, man. But when you get there, I'm telling you, man, they had other opportunities. There's no more promotions for me. It's just positions, right? And, man, you know how many times I have people come to me and say, hey, you know, talk about my last name. Let's just say my last name was Action Jackson, right? They would say, hey, Action Jackson. Hey, Action Jackson. Hey, man, um, we like your leadership. Uh, you know your stuff. You're in shape. You have all the experience. You have the confidence. You're an excellent public speaker. But if we want, but they have this position in opening up, you have legs. When they say I have legs, that means I had a, a lot of time that I could stay in because I made rank, you know, what they would consider early in, in my career, right? I got to that final stripe very early. 
you have long legs. You have another 11, 12 years of doing this if you want to. But you gotta learn to, you know, open up a little bit. And I was like, what do you mean? And they were talking to me about smiling, um, coming in a room and not being so serious. And I'm like, yo, I come back up, I came up in the fighter world. And when I say fighter world, like the fighter aircraft and stuff like that. Uh, when, you, when you're out there in, in, in that environment, you know, everything is break glass in case of emergency moment. So you, you become, you, you just, you're wired differently. And when you go outside of that environment, some people are taken aback. They're like, yo, what's wrong with him? Or what's wrong with her? Their attitudes are, damn, they're so uh, anal or so, so uh, OCD. Or they're just on the edge all the time. It's not that. It's just that's how you become conditioned. And with Bud Crawford, I think he, I, I could see the same thing with him. Oh, he's on the edge. What's he going to do next? He seems so angry. And, and that's the same thing that I went through, man. Same crap. But I think he, I think he, he has more of an opportunity because what he's going up against, man, just like there are people who could influence the positions that I could have gone to. Because there's an interview process, you know. But, you know, I, I may not ever get that opportunity for an interview just because somebody is intimidated by me. Just like many people are intimidated by Bud Crawford. Bud, cool as a fan. You know, don't start none, won't be none. You kind of know where he stands. Be respectful. Everything's good, no problem. He's not looking for, for any issues. Bud's not that guy. But I'm telling you right now, as far as his crossover appeal, I'm telling you because I went through it. He, he, you can see he tried to open up a little bit in this buildup uh, for, for him and Spence and the undisputed uh, distinction, right? And that was nice to see him with his kids and laughing and smiling a bit more and being himself, some things you don't really get to see on camera. But I'm going to tell you all this. Whenever you put him down to talk, I'm talking about Bud Crawford, you put a camera in his face, a microphone in his face, you know what he's going to do? He's going to be the person who he is naturally, which is that serious Nebraskan. You know what I mean? He's, his personality isn't to be smiling and acting like a damn clown. You know what I mean? To talk and joke and act crazy. He's not going to smile like De La Hoya. He's not going to come out here and be, uh, be a villain like like Floyd Mayweather, he's not going to cuss and use a bunch of inappropriate language like, like, um, like uh, what's his name, Adrian Broner. But Bud Crawford is going to be Bud Crawford. He's a lot like Miguel Cotto. Miguel Cotto was serious as a heart attack. You know what I mean? Some, Miguel Cotto most of the time wouldn't even entertain reporters. You know, very short, one, two word answers and gone. Wink his eye, thumbs up. Miguel Cotto ain't had time for no damn interviews. Bud Crawford's a lot like that. But, but he, the different Miguel Cotto, he, you know, a lot of times he had, although he started learning how to speak English, you know, he had a promoter always to, to kind of speak on his behalf. And he, of course, he's big in Puerto Rico. Bud doesn't have that luxury of having an island behind him. But his stateside right now, Bud doesn't have a promoter. Who does Bud have to champion him, to talk about him? You understand? Bob Arum, Bob Arum didn't promote that man right. He, he actually made it seem like Terrence Crawford was worthless. He said he was an outstanding boxer, but you know basically was saying there was no crossover appeal to him. He couldn't put butts in seats. Horrible things Bob said about him. So much so that it hurt him um, with other promoters. They didn't want to touch him. So he goes out, does it his way, and look at what this man did. That, that inspired me, man. Because with me out here and, and, and applying to jobs and and people and what are going and doing these interviews and, and talking to people, man, let me tell you something. When I'm sitting there doing the interview to people, I'm realizing I'm, I'm smarter than them. I know more than them. I'm on the damn Zoom. And they're like intimidating, afraid to ask me questions. Oh, you just have a presence. I'm like, oh, this crap again? I've been retired five years. I'm still dealing with this? Because they want that person to get on the camera and he, he, he. Man, that's not me. When I get up, I'm just, this is how I'm wired, man. Strictly business. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to try to be something I'm not. I'm not going to force it. Just like Bud Crawford, he, sh he shouldn't feel like he has to force it. And if I ever see him doing it, man, I'll hit him up. He reads, uh, he reads people's messages. He don't res respond to everyone. But I I'll definitely hit him up and say, stop. Knock it off. You know what I mean? Be yourself. 
But I, I, I just think this with the right platforms, he can grow his profile because he'll probably be more comfortable. Uh, they won't, there's certain things they may not ask him and he won't go into defensive mode and he get to be himself, laugh and joke and, and relax. You saw that with, you know, him just being on platforms where maybe he identifies a bit more with the guys who, with the host. But, but to really get that crossover mainstream kind of acceptance, he, he's gonna have to, I put it to you this way. If Victor Ortiz is out here doing movies, but did a movie, but I mean, Victor Ortiz stopped boxing because of the dough he was making from, from Hollywood. He out here chilling with Sylvester Stallone and, 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 and Arnold Schwarzenegger and Terry Crews, like uh, Victor Ortiz. Most people don't know that Victor Ortiz, most of these young people, He's a he's a he's a he's an actor. He's a famous A-list celebrity to them. They don't know he was a, a really good boxer. Just didn't have it all up here. Victor Ortiz could have gone a lot further than he did. But what I'm getting at is, what's the difference between Victor Ortiz and Terence Crawford? Victor Ortiz was show teeth, smile, um, and I just think that was his personality. It's like De La Hoya, but you know we all know De La Hoya is. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, you know what I'm saying? This man just did a, a some documentary on his life where he was saying he hated his mother and stuff like that. And I'm like, yo, where'd that come from? But hey, he made it so vulnerable, he told his truth, it is what it is. But you're not gonna hear Buck Crawford talk like that. You know what I'm saying? He'll talk about the things he went through, but this is, this is the thing about Buck Crawford where I would hope the mainstream would understand. This man accepted what he endured as a young man. He understands that he's an adult. He understood this years ago. He's on his own two feet. He got through the fire, the tumultuous times, and he's gonna make sure whatever happened to him that he didn't necessarily like, it's not, he gonna make sure it's all correct when it comes to how he is with his children. So, and I think he also, people need to also understand when you listen to him talk, he realizes, look, man, the time where I was a young man and needed a mother, needed a father, look, I'm a big man. I can't keep talking about that crap now. I'm out here multi-millionaire. I mean, come on. Yeah, it would have been nice, but it is what it is at this point. And I think that can help him get the crossover appeal and the, main, the, main, and the mainstream acceptance. But I just don't think Crawford's going to want to keep talking about that, like, there's so much more to that man, but he's going to have to open up and talk about those other things. But but they're going to try to take it and want him to be a, spo a, a spokesperson for children who were abused and had the mother in a broken home. Man, Crawford doesn't want to be part. He don't want to, to be associated with that crap. He want to be associated with something positive. You know what I'm saying? Something positive. He doesn't need to talk about all that crap. I'm telling you, he don't want that. Just like he, did, he doesn't want... The whole media seeing him and Earl Spence insulting each other and being crazy. Yeah, he lost his cool at the press the press conference before the fight. But it's only, and I agree with him, it's only so so much disrespect you can tolerate. You know what I'm saying? There's only so much. I'll give you a story. Talking about, you know, trying to be professional and, you know, and, and, and not lose your cool. I'll give you a quick story, right? I was, uh, I had been in the military like uh, maybe eight years, eight years at the time. And, um, and it's a true story, man. Anyway, my dad, man, something, my dad ended up passing away, right? And uh, there was this old lady who uh, was over our section. Shit, I'm telling you, it was the truth. Anyway, man, uh, after, you know, things happened with my pops, my brothers and I took him, uh, took him back home, you know, to the Caribbean and uh, make sure he was treated properly. So anyway, I come back off of leave and mm -hmm. first day back, mm -hmm. this guy I work with, me and him were cool. He was like, hey man, <clears throat> how you doing? I was like, man, I don't know, I, 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 don't, I don't feel right. You know, cause I just lost my dad, so you know, I, even to this day, man, I still ain't right about that shit. But I was like, yo, <clears throat> I need um, 
I may need to take a little more time off, man. And he was like, well, you know, I don't know how that's going to go. I was like, well, what do you mean? I got, I got the time, you know. And I said, but I said, I'm going to you know, keep trying to push through, get here, do what I can. I said, well, I'm telling you, man, this, it ain't easy. So he said, I just want to give you a heads up, right? Check this out now. I just want to give you a heads up that, and he told me, you know, that the person's name, the old female, he said, uh, that they're, they're saying that they're watching you to make sure you don't take advantage of your father's death to just try to get time off to not come to work. Yo, man, I saw red. Well, I tell you, I saw red, man. Uh, the, the emotions that ran through me, not good. I'll leave it to you as that. So he, he is there trying to, because it's just he and I in the office at the time, he's trying to calm me down, you know, because he could see it in my face. Like, my face went from, you know, kind of like opening up, saying, look, I don't feel right. You know, I'm going to need a little more time off to be in more like stone face. You know what I'm saying? He's like, no, I don't say nothing. I'm, you know, come on, I'm putting myself out there, let, letting you know this. I just want to give you a heads up what you're dealing with. i like, yeah, all right. He's like, man, come on, don't say nothing. You're going to put me in a hot, hot seat. I said, all right. So I let like uh, two weeks go. But when, when, but every time I came into that office, I'd be locking eyes with this this this, this female. It's an older lady. She's like 60-something. But I'd be locking eyes with her, man, because <clears throat> I just looked at her, man, like you trash to, to, to even talk like that about somebody who just went through what I had gone through, right? But let me tell you a quick story now. Things hit the fan anyway. I'll tell you what happened. Um, and this ties into, you know, you want to be professional and you want to push through things, right? Anyway, one day I'm sitting there and she's trying to talk to me and I'm intentionally ignoring her. So anyway, she comes over there and she decides to get my attention. I'm looking at her and she reaches and she grabs on me. And this is what I'm telling you where Crawford losing his cool at that press conference. He keep getting disrespected. She grabs onto me. So I remember I, I jerked my hand back and I grabbed her arm and I stood up and I was like, yo, you ever put your hand on me again, I'll cut off your effing arm. And um, I didn't say it that cool though, but everybody got scared in there because they probably never heard nobody say nothing like that. And and I remember um, they were like, hey, come on, out, come on outside, you know, come on outside. So I walked out and they were like, you know, hey, just, just go home, you know, go home for the day and just we'll call you in. They wanted to get me up out of there because I think they knew that there's a potential that something really bad could happen. And then some people, other people weren't really understanding what had just transpired. They noticed that there was a change in my energy for the last two, that last fortnight, but they didn't understand why. Well, they didn't understand because I didn't really have nothing to say to nobody because I didn't trust anybody. So anyway, <clears throat> long story short, when people disrespect you, the ultimate level is what I felt like I went through. You end up losing your cool, man. And that's the same thing with Crawford, not wanting to lose his cool. Uh, but people keep disrespecting, disrespecting him. And then, you know, bad things could happen. And anyway, with that story I just gave you, uh, if you want to know, hey, well, so what ended up happening? For me to say something like that, did I get in trouble? No, they called me to, I had to go talk to this guy. Let's just say he was a superintendent. And he was trying to find out what happened. He already got the story that, you know, she grabbed me, right? Grabbed my, like, my, my arm right here, like, grab right here. So that's where she messed up. But they were just like, they were all afraid because of my name. If I tell you my name, you know, you'd understand why during that period of time. They were all afraid and shit. So anyway, I, I, he was like, so what, what, what do you, so we heard what happened. What do you want us to do? I said, you asking me what you want me to do about her grabbing my arm? I said, do to her what you do to me if I was the one who went over and grabbed that old lady's arm. Now, there's some other things that came into play that he knew what I was implying, okay? i like, do to, do to her what you would have done to me if I did that to her. He was like, well, okay, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll address it. So I ended up uh, giving her like a, um, a reprimand or something. But if that would have been me, I would have had this, hey, y'all, I would have no military story for They would have kicked me up out of there. You better believe that. But, but, but anyway, when it comes to Crawford, 
That's kind of how, how, how he is, man. You can't keep disrespecting somebody, man. I think they're going to sit there and keep taking that, you know? And then I see now a lot of people are saying stuff about his wife. That's the other thing that, you know, I hope he stands firm and strong because he may not want that to put his wife out there like that, you know? She, she's very, I think she's very attractive. I don't see why people are saying stuff about her, man. I mean, that's the thing that is horrible. I mean, so this success for him could, 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 could be a bad thing if he desires that crossover appeal, that mainstream, mainstream acceptance. Because the way the world is, and this social media, and these people in Hollywood and TMZ, they're they're, they're crazy, man. They'll be saying all kind of horrible things, man. And and, and Crawford and his family, they, man, they they ain't built for that, man. They don't want to deal with that. He ain't leaving his wife and for, for nothing, and he's he he doesn't want that. I think he had he's been through enough to where he wasn't given his credit and wasn't accepted for who he is as a boxer and what he brings to the table as a boxer. He, he ain't going to go through a round two now, but this time not being accepted because he doesn't smile or because of his family by mainstream, you know, and, and, and Hollywood. Like, he ain't, he ain't going through that. But I'll tell you what, if, if he's thinking about it, I would hope he gets himself a hold of somebody to talk to and keep him grounded and say, look, you don't need it. I was talking to somebody today. I'll put it to you this way. The person out here grinding. They're grinding, they're working, they have their PhD, and they were telling me how they were $70,000 in debt. And I'm like, how? You know what I mean? What, school loans or what? And they were like, no. I said, so how the hell you get $70,000 in debt? I said, okay, your car. Okay, okay, I can understand you need a car, but you got yourself a little fifty thousand dollar car, and you got twenty thousand. So you got seventy thousand dollars, and they're like, man, if I just had X amount of dollars without this debt, I wouldn't be working. I'd have my retirement and everything. I'd live like that without this stress. It's too much stress, too much BS. And they told me they're like, you know, you out here sounding like you want to find something to fill your time. They're like, you you in a good position. Don't go out there and force. Uh, for, force yourself uh, to do something that you know you really don't need to do they like make sure they like just being able to have that peace of mind and be happy is everything and I think with Terrence Crawford same thing he don't need to force himself to do something he doesn't need to do peace of mind he's got real dough and he has a, a loving family there's no need to go forward <clears throat> and fight for the mainstream to try to accept him his wife his kids uh, his, his personality try to change him he likes to wear jeans and sneakers. They were criticizing during the press conference because of how he was dressed. All kind of crap. He goes on the TV this morning, and he's got on his little sneakers, jeans, and shirts where he's the most comfortable. People judging him about that. He should have had on a suit and tie. He doesn't need to do that. He is what he is. He's comfortable in his own skin. I was the same way. You know, I used to get all the time, man. At my level, man, everybody was golfing, golfing. I never did that sh crap. It's not my thing. I had my son's, my son's golf. They like golfing, but that wasn't me. I like boxing. You know what I mean? I like lifting weights and running, man. And none of them corn balls was out there doing that crap I was doing. You know what I'm saying? And nobody would come up in the gym hitting the heavy bag and speed bag with me, man. None of them. They come in there and look, and you know, oh yeah, I'm like, hey man, put on the gloves, hit the bag. They wouldn't do it. I'm like, but they what? They'll, but they'll all go out there and, and, and chit chat and talk nonsense and play golf. I want to go and. and in, in a barbecue and drink beer and eat bratwurst. Get out of here with that crap, man. You know, be comfortable in your skin. So with Bud Crawford, he lack crossover appeal. I mean, you know, you be the judge of that. Does he need to find a promoter ASAP to help push the envelope a little bit? I mean, you ask, you, you, you make a decision on that. Uh, but for me, I think he just grinded out. He's okay where he is and he doesn't need anything more. That being said, y'all keep cool. Shout out to the veterans on seven continents. And the breeze.